Hello YouTube, I'm Toby and this right here is a $32 custom water cooling loop. Now I got the parts for this loop on AliExpress for just around $32. When I came across all these parts I just couldn't resist the urge to actually buy them and try and do something with them. So this video will pretty much just be my, uh, my attempt at making this work and uh, spoiler alert it actually works. But before we get into the actual build, let's uh, introduce the uh, parts. Alright, so these are the parts we got for uh, $32. Uh, let's take a better look at these uh, parts individually. Alright, so first up is this 80mm uh, see-through LED fan. Uh, this does not have the 3-pin connector, this is a straight Molex connector, so I think that I might actually put this in the front of the uh, computer. And right here we have what I've been waiting the longest for. Uh, this is our CPU block. It's a, I believe it's 40 by 40 millimeter uh, aluminum um, CPU block. Believe it or not, I actually waited, uh, I think, just over a month for this thing. Pretty much everything else uh, came early, but this is uh, the last piece of the puzzle and it finally arrived today. I'm actually quite excited to test this thing out. I don't think it will be extremely uh, efficient, but I uh, guess we'll see. This right here is our reservoir. And uh, here we have the uh, fittings for it, uh, they're metal. I believe the uh, reservoir is acrylic. I'm not really sure if it's actually acrylic, but um, yeah. I don't know how well this thing works. I don't, I'm kind of uh, nervous about the uh, metallic fittings fitting into the acrylic right here, but hopefully uh, if I crack something, I can always just epoxy it on. And in this little box right here, we find our little pump assembly. Uh, it doesn't really have a uh, connector, so I'm gonna have to figure out something there. But it seems like a pretty straight, uh, straightforward uh, pump assembly. Not yet really sure which is the intake and which is the outlet, but I guess we'll figure that one out when we uh, get to it. And in this box right here, we have yet another sketchy component. This is our uh, radiator. It's made to fit an 80 millimeter fan. Uh, the uh, overall quality doesn't look that impressive but it does look like it might uh, function and we also have the uh, appropriate screws to secure the radiator and the uh, well 80 millimeter fan to it now I wasn't really sure how much tubing I'd need so I got uh, I believe it's three meters of this hospital grade uh, flexible tube and last but not least uh, this was not included in the uh, $32 but it's a acid green a premix of some uh, cooling fluid. Alright, so this right here is the uh, system we'll be running this uh, this water loop in. For a CPU, we have an Intel i3-2100 clocked at 3.1 GHz. The GPU in here is not that important right now, it's a Radeon 4870. We have uh, 8 GB of RAM uh, over 4 DIMM slots. The uh, power supply is a 400 watt power supply, I can't remember the exact name of it. Now down in the front we have an Arctic F8 80mm fan. Uh, I'll be moving this up to become the new CPU fan and the uh, RGB one will go in the front. So as you can see right now our idling temperature is somewhat around the uh, low 30s. Um, I'm gonna have this thing open while it runs a few benchmarks just to uh, keep an eye out for the maximum temperature. Alright, so the first test we're gonna, going to run is the Cinebench R15. 265 CB, that's not bad. And our maximum temperature during the Cinebench test was 53 degrees Celsius. All right, so we're currently running the uh, Thermark uh, CPU burner. I'm gonna run this for around 10 minutes just to see what our maximum temperature is going to be. Okay now, so the uh, CPU burner has been running for uh, more or less 10 minutes and the maximum temperature we've reached is uh, 56 degrees Celsius. So let's uh, shut this thing down and see, uh, well, work out a plan for the uh, further development of this system. You know, the more I look at this, the more I realize I did not have an actual plan when I uh, went ahead and purchased these items. But I am thinking I want the reservoir around here. Uh, that way I can easily fill it when the computer is on its side. I still haven't figured out uh, <laughs> which part of this pump is the intake and the outlet, but so far I'm thinking I want it down here and then have the radiator right here with the fan on it and from the fan and radiator go down to the CPU block 
and then up around here again and uh, feed right back into the uh, reservoir. Alright, so it's time to take the uh, CPU uh, heatsink off. And it should be an easy task. Just like that. Like that. The RAM might be in the way. Hopefully it isn't, and it ain't. Alright, that's the old heatsink. Let's just get all this uh, old thermal paste off. We'll be uh, replacing this uh, with some new. Alright, so before we add some new thermal paste, all I have to do is figure out how I want to mount this thing. I'm thinking zip ties. And just like that, the CPU block is installed. Uh, still not sure if the coverage <laughs> I have on here is enough yet, but we'll figure that one out as we uh, go along. Now I was trying to mount the uh, fan to the uh, radiator when I came across this screw right here. Uh, I'm not sure how well this picks up, but this thing is a pretty good example of uh, Chinese uh, quality control. Uh, the rest of the screws looks fine, but this one right here is pretty screwed up. But hopefully I can uh, still make this thing work. Alright, we've run into yet another hurdle. Uh, the, uh, this screw, the last screw, I guess the way the entire thing is configured uh, does not exactly line up with the uh, hole down in the radiator. So from what it looks right now, I'll only be using three screws and not sure what I'm going to do about that, but we'll figure that one out later. Alright, so the fan is finally mounted to the uh, radiator. I still haven't figured out how to de do the uh, last screw, but I can, I can actually live without that. It's, it's a janky build this anyway, so something going wrong isn't really that big of an issue. Alright, so I have a plan regarding the uh, little, little pump. This right here is the uh, Molex connector that goes to the uh, LED fan. Uh, Molex runs off of 12 volts, so I've pretty much just, well, cut the uh, second half of the Molex connector off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to expose these two wires, and I'm going to wire up the pump to this, so that way it the Molex connector will power both the, uh, the little fan with the LEDs and a little pump right here. So there should be should be good to go on that one now. So far so good. I've hooked up the uh, yellow to the red and the black to the black. So I am definitely hoping that I've done this correctly. Otherwise we might hear some funky noises coming from this pump right here. But so far so good. I think I may actually soon be able to put the motherboard back in. I actually think I might be able to do that now. Uh, all I have to do first is uh, install the fan in the front and we should be able to put the motherboard back in. Look at that, the fan is now installed and it is spinning freely. So that is awesome. Now next up uh, I think is uh, putting the uh, fan, well <laughs> sorry not the fan, the pump in. And finding a Molex connector up here see if we this thing will go in easily I have to say these Molex connectors oh okay there it came I will usually have issues with these Molex connectors they're not always that easy to uh, plug in now I really hope you guys are going to enjoy this video because I just ruined my glue gun I was a little too tough on it I guess so far so good I just need the tubing and the uh, well the actual water now Got the uh, reservoir mounted up here, mounted the uh, pump down here, got the radiator right there and the CPU block is down here. It should be still be fairly secure. Have the graphics card reinstalled. Um, quite interesting to see if I can actually wrap this thing around. But let's figure that one out now. Alright, so this is pretty much what the loop is going to look like. I have some bends and all that over here and there, but I'm hoping that will uh, work itself out once I get some uh, liquid flowing in this system. I also have to work out some way to secure these fittings to the, uh, sorry, the tubing to the fittings um, because they don't really seem like they are that uh, robust or reliable uh, seals. I'm thinking about using some hot glue just around the edges to make sure that everything fits. But right now I have the length I'll need and pretty much just gotta fire up the hot glue gun once again and well, hope that I can make that work without the uh, glue gun trigger. Alright, we're ready to add the fluids. Let's see how well this works out.
All right, so we're already leaking some fluid down here. Uh, I don't know, I'm hoping it's not the radiator itself that's actually leaking. All right, so slide update. It seems that pretty much every fitting in here is leaking. I've got some leakage in the fitting right here on the top of the radiator. The bottom one is also dripping. Uh, I haven't seen any, uh, well, there's a little leakage around the CPU actually. Uh, so that's leaking. The reservoir fittings are leaking. Uh, the pump does not seem to be. Well, there's a little leakage down here, so. For what it's worth right now, <laughs> this computer is pretty much grounded and has to uh, pretty much dry out. Alright, so as it turns out, there's not a single fitting in this entire loop that was actually uh, watertight. So, um, for right now, I'm just gonna leave this thing to tomorrow. For tomorrow, I've uh, drained the loop as best I can. Uh, hoping that I haven't done too much damage to the uh, motherboard. But I guess this is what you get when you uh, only buy $32 worth of water cooling equipment. Now, if your plan is to invest in water cooling, I'd highly suggest you uh, get some professional fittings and something a little more expensive. Now that being said, this is not the end of the video. Uh, there's still a day tomorrow, and uh, I have a I have a feeling I can make this work. But probably gonna acquire some uh, ingenuity. Alright, so it is now the next day and I've gotten all of my tubes out. Um, it seems that most everything is dried up. Uh, this right here is new. But it seems like we may be good to go for a second attempt at this. Uh, I got some epoxy. I don't know if I have enough to uh, do every tube. Um, I really didn't want to do epoxy, uh, hot glue, I thought we might do it because I can redo hot glue. Um, but I don't really care about uh, this system being uh, permanent. I just want to figure out if this is actually possible to do, and if it actually works, uh, if the CPU block works as good as I think it does. Okay, great, so after this move of desperation, it's now time to let the epoxy set. So far, so good. I've uh, added, I think the epoxy may have uh, dried. Uh, it's not completely dry yet, so I'm not gonna fill the loop. Um, but, you can see down by some of these fittings, there are uh, no leakage, uh, where there uh, appears to be uh, liquid in them. I've added some paper just to make sure that there's no leakage, but so far, it actually looks quite good. Alright, so I think the fittings may be uh, good to go now. So I figured let's try and pour some more liquid in here. I think I may have filled it a little too much, but let's see how this works. Alright, let's try and turn the system on just to see what happens. Alright, it's making a few noises, but it looks pretty okay. Alright, so that noise you're hearing is actually the uh, pump. Uh, I don't know if something's wrong with it, but... Uh, but it's making a horrible sound, but it doesn't really seem like anything is leaking, so uh, let's turn this thing off. And hook it up to the... Uh, well, to the, <laughs> to the monitor. Alright, so we got the system booted up and we're idling around uh, the low 30s again. So let's fire up uh, Cinebench R15. And Cinebench R15 gave us 267 uh, CB, which, if I'm not mistaken, is pretty much the same as we uh, we had before. And the maximum temperature during Cinebench R15 was 47, uh, sorry, 46 degrees Celsius. And we are now running the Fermark uh, CPU burner test. All right, so we've been running the uh, Fermark CPU burner for uh, just short of 10 minutes, and our maximum temperature is 50 degrees Celsius. 
So I would definitely call this a success. Alright YouTube, so that was my uh, $32 custom uh, water cooling loop. Now what have we learned from this? Well, if you're planning on doing this in uh, something other than a tinkering PC, I would highly recommend getting some more expensive and uh, better parts. However, if all you can afford is uh, this crap right here, you should definitely recommend. Uh, you should definitely think about getting some uh, lower diameter tubing and maybe some clamps uh, that might save you from having to use uh, epoxy, which pretty much makes this a permanent loop. The plan for this build right now is I'm just going to let it stand here for a while just to make sure that it doesn't start leaking after a couple hours or something. But yeah, I don't know if I'm going to keep this loop. I might actually try and take it out uh, just so I can get some further use out of this computer because right now it's pretty uh, pretty permanent in its configuration. So I might see if I can save the, uh, save the computer from that. But I really hope you enjoyed, the, enjoyed watching this video and thank you very much for watching.